my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us spend a moment in silent meditation as we prepare to worship our Lord. We meet as family in the presence of our Heavenly Father. We meet as brothers and sisters in Christ, accepting the responsibility that this places upon us to love one another as you have loved us. We meet as your light in the dark world and pray that through our words and our lives, others might be drawn into your family and accept you as their Savior and Lord. Amen.
Good morning. morning. And I welcome you to St. Mary's Episcopal Church in Dade City, Florida on this 10th Sunday after the Feast of Pentecost. But an important programming note, today we also celebrate the feast day of our church. Tomorrow, August 15th, is the feast day of the Mother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Blessed Virgin Mary. And so we will also celebrate her today with our readings and our gospel. So um, we have a joint service going on today, just to let you know. But that service does begin in your bulletin or on page 355 in the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And our song of praise this morning is Praise, Honor, and Glory in your insert in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have taken to yourself the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of your incarnate Son. Grant that we who have been redeemed by his blood may share with her the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with a robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Our psalm is 34, verses 1 through 9, found in your insert, or on page 627 of the Book of Common Prayer. We read it responsively, parting at the half verse. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will, will glory in the Lord. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. I sought the Lord. And he answered me. Look upon him and be radiant. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me. The angel of the Lord encompasses those who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Fear the Lord, and that you are his saints. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. When the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might, have, we might receive adoption as children. 
And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you this morning in the name of our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Today we do celebrate the feast day of our Blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of our Lord and Savior. And this is an important day for us because for us it's a day of celebration of the faith and trust that Mary showed toward God. But there's even a deeper message in it because it shows us the power and the glory of God that shows through people that submit to his will and are receptive to his plan and say yes to God, that God can do glorious things in and through us if we'll just follow him, if we'll just submit to his plan for us instead of trying to go it on our own and do it all our own way. And as we celebrate St. Mary today, we kind of have a conundrum because we wonder, well, what is Mary's legacy? I mean, we know the story of Mary, but why do we celebrate her some 2,000 years after the birth of Jesus? 
I mean, besides the fact that she was the mother of Jesus, of course. But looking historically at Mary, I mean, there was nothing about her that was remarkable. She didn't come from a rich family. She didn't come from political power. And in fact, we know the story of Mary. She was a 13-year-old unwed virgin who was suddenly pregnant with child, a, a scandal among her people at the time. So what is it about Mary that we celebrate? What is it about Mary that is so blessed and so special to us? What is her legacy in the church? Well, I think a title given to Mary in a lot of churches and a lot of devotionals speaks a lot to that. We actually call Mary the mother of the church. Now think about that for a minute. Mary, of course, was the mother of Jesus Christ, but what do we call the body of Jesus Christ? The church. Without Mary, there could have been no Jesus. Without Jesus, there would be no church. So Mary is indeed the mother of the church, and not just this one, but every denomination that follows Jesus Christ. But we can focus on that a little more and go one better. Mary was officially the first Christian. She was the first person to know and follow Jesus Christ. She was the first person to hear his words and to do as he asked and to follow his will. So Mary becomes somewhat of a model for us of what it means to be a Christian, what it means to truly follow Jesus Christ. You know, there might be some out there that think, well, God just randomly chose Mary to bear the, the, the body of Jesus Christ. But I think those of us that know the story know that that's not quite true. There was more going on than that. You see, God chose Mary because of her faithfulness. God chose Mary because she exhibited trust and faith in God. You see, God knew something about Mary that nobody else did. God knew her heart. God knew before he even asked her the question about bearing the Christ child that her answer would be yes. And she said, yes, indeed. Yes, Lord, I will do this thing for you. She was called to be the mother of the Messiah, to be the mother of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And God never calls us to anything that he doesn't give us the grace to perform that work. He doesn't give us the power to do what he's called us to do. And Mary's no different. Mary received grace and blessing abundantly. We hear the angel even refer to Mary that way as being full of blessing. She wasn't just a little bit full. She was all the way full. Mary was totally blessed. That's why we call her the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, right? She received blessing beyond measure from God because of her faithfulness, because of her trust. And we need to know that for ourselves, too. God never gives us a call that he doesn't give us the grace and the power to do it. We might be anxious or afraid when we hear God call us down a particular path, but we have to have faith and trust that God wouldn't do that if he wasn't going to help us be successful, if he wasn't going to give us the power and the grace and the blessing to make that thing happen. Now our problem is it doesn't always happen as quickly as we think or the way it should or the way we had it all planned out. And that's the ongoing mystery of God's plan that we have to wrestle with. God works in his own way in his own time, and we don't always know that way. And Mary certainly didn't. But she had faith in God. She had trust in God. And she answered his call. And in answering her call, his call, Mary received blessing upon blessing. And the greatest blessing she received was when the Holy Spirit came upon her. Because that was just like when we get baptized. She was suddenly washed with the Holy Spirit. 
just like we were. In fact, if you want to talk about first, Mary was really the first person to have a Christian baptism with the Holy Spirit. Remember John? He baptizes with water, but one will come after you that will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Mary was the first to receive that baptism. And we received that same baptism of the Holy Spirit with us. And we're given a job to do in our baptism. We're given a task by God of what we're to do as Christians when we go through that baptism. And if we really want to figure out how to do that, look at Mary. Follow Mary. Do the things that she did in her life with Christ. She shows us all about what it means to be obedient, to be faithful, to be trusting in God, to bend our will to God's will, not the other way around, and to do God's work. Mary is our model in that. Mary is who we look to for what it truly means to be a follower of Jesus Christ. Because she followed him from the time he was a child. She watched him grow up. Boy, wouldn't you like to know a little bit about those years between Bethlehem and the Jordan, right? What Jesus was like a kid. We all have wonder about that, but Mary was there. Mary was there being faithful and true, teaching him scripture, teaching him about how to get closer to God, have a better relationship with God. Mary knew that we can't have that relationship until we build it. It doesn't just come to us. It's something that we have to nurture, something that we have to make happen. And we see in Mary one who lived her life in Christ. Her life was all about her son, Jesus Christ. Everything she did, she did for him. And we're called to do the same. We're called to live our lives in Jesus Christ, to live our lives according to what he has taught us, what he commands us to do. And so we can look at Mary as our model. That is her legacy. She's the mother of the church. She's the first Christian. She's the only person that knew Jesus as the way only a mother can. And so she becomes our supreme model. But there's something more we get out of this whole story with Jesus and Mary. And that's just the gloriousness of new birth. Don't we love new birth? Because new birth is new life, right? Anytime we have a birth going on, there's new life coming into our world. And with Jesus and Mary, that new life was really something because when Jesus was born, that opened for us the new eternal life. That was the new life that Jesus brought to the table. Something after this world, something after our time on this planet. Communion with God for the rest of our days, whether it's physical or not. And what was Mary's response to that? We hear it today in the Magnificat. Pure joy. Pure joy and adoration to God. My soul sings to the Lord. Mary was so happy about this thing that happened. So many emotions she could have had. But she was joyful. And that's easy for us to believe because what happens to us when we hear someone's pregnant? We're joyful. We're pleased for them. We're happy. What great news. Congratulations. New birth, new life is something to be joyful about. And we've certainly had a lot here at St. Mary's to be joyful about. In fact, after this service, after this service, we'll celebrate that joy as we shower Amanda and PJ and Reagan with love for their new life that's coming into their life, for baby Riley. But have you lost count about how many babies we've had lately? We might not have noticed it, but we've had a whole bunch. Grayson and Stetson, Hadley, all baptized in our church. Alice Olivia, Hallie, 
Natalie and Emery, who we baptized at, at um, uh, Easter this time. Anna Elizabeth, who we just had a shower for and was just born a few weeks ago. And now we're looking at two more young babies coming into our family. Riley, for one. And Danielle, help me out because I keep forgetting. Kenna. Kenna. And Kenna, who's coming in December. Think about that. That's like ten kids in three years. Ten new lives that have come into not just this world, but into the body of Christ. Because they have faithful parents who want to raise them in the faith. If you don't think those ten people can add new life and change what we're doing here, you don't know how new life works. You can't add a new life to something and not have it change. And it's going to change us. It's going to change us for the better. Having those giggling voices, sometimes those fussy voices. But still, isn't it a sign of life? Isn't it a sign of something that we love to hear in the church? Sure it is. And we're joyful for that. We have joy in our hearts because God puts new life on this planet. And I don't know about you, but as a parent myself, one of my greatest joys as a father was holding my son and looking at him while he fell asleep in my arms. That kind of peaceful look on his face. Boy, we should go back to those times, don't you? <laughs> Didn't have a care in the world, but you'd sit there and rock him and maybe he'd reach out and grab your pinky finger with his whole hand and kind of grab onto you, yearning for that touch, yearning for that connection. And you held him in your arms, so full of life and yet so fragile. And you rocked him and you looked at him and you wondered, What's he going to be? What's he going to be when he grows up? What kind of music is he going to like? Where's he going to live? Where's he going to work? Is he going to get married? Is he going to have kids? Then you go on and on and on. You have his whole life planned out before he's even out of the rocking chair. But we wonder those things because children are full of expectation. They're full of potential. And we wonder what's going to happen. And we can be sure that Mary had those moments. That Mary held that little child in her arms and wondered what? What, God? You've told me the big stuff, but what about the in-between? What is this boy going to become? Now granted, Mary had a lot more knowledge than most of us as parents do because God kind of laid out for her what was going to happen, right? Right? He was going to be the Messiah, the Son of the God. He was going to lift up the lowly, feed the hungry, you know, release the captive, all these things. He was going to be a big deal. Mary knew that. But once again, the in-between stuff she didn't know. What kind of a kid is he going to be? What kind of a child? Is he going to be rambunctious or quiet? Wouldn't we love to have a gospel of Jesus between Bethlehem and the Jordan? And know just a little bit about what he was like. And so we wonder, we wonder at the potential, the expectation. But Mary knew, Mary was told what was going to happen with her, what was going to happen with her child. And God poured his blessing upon her. She was blessed beyond measure. Because she said the one magic word. Yes. Here I am, Lord, your servant. Have it be so with me. That here I am moment, that choose me, Lord, moment. It's the difference between not following God's will and following God's will. When God puts a path in front of us and we say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. That's the blessedness that Mary had. The ability to be obedient and to say yes. And that blessing pours on everyone who came after her, who has anything to do with children. Mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunts and uncles and nieces. Everybody who nurtures and attends to children 
has the same blessedness of Mary. That's what Mary gives us. That model of motherhood, that modelhood of what it means to nurture life and to be there up until the bitter end, up until the cross at Calvary, up until the death in the tomb. Mary was right there with her son each and every step of the way. Her life could not have been her life without him. Their life was a coexistent one. We need to come to realize that ours are as well. Our lives are coexistent on our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We can't live our lives the way we're supposed to without him in them. We can't live our lives the way we're supposed to without listening to God's call for us. Without us saying yes to his plan. That's what we celebrate this day. That we might have the faith and trust that Mary has. That we might have the obedience to God that Mary had. That we might have the courage, even though we might be fearful or anxious, to say yes. Yes, Lord, I'll do it. Even though I don't know what's going to go on, I'll do it. I might not understand or agree, but I'll do it. I'll trust in you that you have good things for me. So let's lift our hearts today for St. Mary. Let's lift our hearts today for the mother of the church. Let's lift our hearts today for the first Christian that's our model of what it means to follow Jesus Christ, what it means to walk his path. If you remember Mary's first appearance after the birth narrative is where? The wedding at Cana, right? The first big miracle. And what does she say as the wine runs out? And the stewards come wondering what to do. Mary turns to them and says, whatever he says to do, do it. Whatever he says do, do it. Those words are meant for us as well. Whatever he tells us to do, we are to do it. That's how we honor him. That's how we honor her. And that's how we honor our baptismal covenant. To go out and do the things that he has told us to do. So as we celebrate new birth and new life, let us remember that we can have new life in ourselves by following God's way, by following God's plan. He can turn our lives upside down with a simple word, yes. Yes, Lord, I believe. Choose me. Amen. Please stand as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed found in your bulletin or on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning are Form 3, as is found in your bulletin. Let us kneel before God as we lift our voices to him in prayer. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Dabney, our bishop, Jim, our rector, for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that they may be Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to the departed eternal rest, that light protect us. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Gracious God, we do lift up to you St. Mary's Episcopal Church and her people, beseeching you to guide, guard, and bless us as we do your ministry in this place. And gracious God, we lift up to you all of those on our parish prayer list, those preparing for or recovering from surgeries, those with ongoing need of healing, and those with urgent need this day, most especially Dara Morgan, Lee Conley, Bill McGavern, John and Heather Sutherland, Peggy Fetch, Grayson Edwards, John Harrison, Robert Worth, Logan Hacker, Barry Court, Tom Parks, Judy Henry, Larry Schwartz, Ryan, Kyle Peterson, and Ted Benz. We also give you thanksgiving this day for Amanda Price and Kaylee Hicks, Gracious God, beseeching you to be with them and guide, guard, and protect them as they continue in their pregnancies, that you might be with them as they joyfully bring new life into the world. And gracious God, this day we lift up to you and repose the soul of Rose Newman. We ask you to open up your arms to her and welcome her into your heavenly kingdom. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Are there others to be named? Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people, and the multitude of your mercies look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O oh lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And now using the confessional that is in your bulletin or on page 360 of the Book of Common Prayer, let us humbly confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
Have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace all. Peace, peace. Peace up there. Peace out. Yeah. You can if you want to. If they're, if they're up for it. Good morning. Please be seated. Once again, welcome to St. Mary's Episcopal Church on this Sunday, and we thank you for joining us for worship and praise. Um, a few announcements for you, and actually all the announcements are on the back of your bulletin, uh, but a few I want to direct your attention to. Number one is um, we have our Munch Bunch sign up going up for the fall, and we already have 15 couples signed up for that, so we could use a few more to round that out, and that's just a a small home gathering where you're uh, put together with two other couples and you guys get together as you can plan it and either have a meal or have coffee in Danish or whatever it is you want to do. It's however you want to get together, but it's the important part is getting together and spending time and talking to each other and finding out a little more about each other's walk and about each other's life so that we get more than we get just an hour an hour here at church. So um, especially if you're kind of new to the church and you want to meet some of the folks in the church on a, a closer level, then... Sign up and be part of that group, and we'll be glad to have you join us. Um, we are continuing our uh, school supplies uh, drive for um, Cox Elementary, and so uh, if you have a heart to help them out, they're our local elementary school, and they're a high-needs school. Um, they don't have much in the way of school supplies and stuff, so anything you do can help. Crayons, paper, pencils, you name it. Um, anything that you can bring in bulk for them to share would be appreciated, and there will be a little drop-off next to the memorial stand in Freeman Hall. So um, we invite you to come take part in that as well. Um, I think that's the major things, other than we have a wonderful baby shower going on. We hit the pause button for this service. But after this service, we'd love to have you join us in Freeman Hall. We have lots of good eats and punch and stuff, and you can uh, meet the mama-to-be and uh, her family. And uh, I think PJ and them still here? Yeah, they're down there? Okay. So you can come meet them and uh, shower them with some love and uh, just let them know that we're here uh, thinking on them and praying on them as, uh, as we prepare for Riley to come in a couple of weeks. So um, we invite you to join that and be part of our, our family there. So um, join us over in Freeman Hall right after the service. Um, as always, we celebrate birthdays. And this week celebrating birthdays are Mark Pike, Marge Moffat, Connie Burden, Jack Finnerty, Leland Conley, and Laura Weeks. And I don't believe any of those folks are here with us today, so. Huh? Oh, Leon is here. Okay. Come on down, Lee. Thank you. I hate doing this alone. I always like having someone to pray with. How are you, my brother? Good. Good, good. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all the days of our life that you give us and all of the days that you let us walk in your light and love. Gracious God, I lift up to you all of those who are celebrating birthdays this week, most especially this year's servant Leland and Lee, and I ask you to, to be with him and be with all of those celebrating birthdays this week. Let their day be full of your grace and blessing, and let their celebration of their birthday be a joyous occasion with friends and family and whoever they might want to celebrate with. And Gracious God, though, as always, we ask them, you ask you to let them have a little time on their special day to look back on their life and their relationship with you and with others and to make sure they're, they're walking the path that you want them to walk. And that might be an epiphany to them that will be a present in itself. So, gracious God, we just lift them up to you. We lift them up to you for your grace, for your blessing, and for your protection for all of their days remaining. And we ask this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And happy birthday to you. you. God bless you.
And we have one anniversary this week, Jeff and Lois Alston, and I know they're away from us this weekend on vacation, but we will pray for them. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you give us spouses, partners, those that we share our lives with, those that we can lean into in our time of need and lean into us and theirs so that neither of us should fall. Gracious God, I ask your blessing on Jeff and Lois as they celebrate their anniversary this week. I ask you to be with them on their special day. Let it be full of your grace and blessing and full of your light and love. And gracious God, just let them celebrate with friends and family and all of those that make them happy and joyful and can help them celebrate this occasion. And we lift them up to you in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Are there any other need for blessings, surgeries or traveling? I think everyone's kind of home now that school started again, so that's a good thing. It's going to be here. So this is the time of the service that I say if this is your first time at St. Mary's. If you are here every now and again or if you are here week by week, my brothers and sisters, welcome. You are home. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
This morning we'll be celebrating Eucharistic Prayer B as is in your bulletin or on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer, Eucharistic Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil, and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this. For the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all. Presenting to you from your creation this bread, and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son and his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ. And bring us to that heavenly country where, with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary and with all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. 
Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. It is made ready for those who love him and for those who want to love him more. So come you who have faith and you who have little. You who have been here often and you who have not been here long. You who have tried to follow and you who have failed. Come, because it is the Lord who invites you. It is his will that those who want him should meet him here. Just a reminder, as we begin communion, we do have an intention chalice, so if you wish to intent your wine, rather than drinking from the common cup, as soon as you receive your host, you can stand up and come to Daryl, our Eucharistic minister, and he will be glad to intent your host from you. Otherwise, we'll assume you're using the common cup if you're at the altar rail.
using the post-communion prayer in your bulletin or on page 366 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And almighty and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, his mother. Let us always attain to her model to be obedient to you, to be receptive to your will, and show our faith and trust in all things. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forevermore. Amen. My brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia.